Hey everyone, welcome to this basics video on algebra, the order of operations, and solving equations. Like I said in the last video, the stuff in this video might just be a refresher for some people, but you definitely need to have this down because you'll be doing it a lot in physics. So in this video, we're going to answer the question, what is algebra? We'll cover the order of operations, and we'll learn how to solve equations, which turns out you'll probably be doing every single time you solve a physics problem. So first off, what is algebra? Algebra is a part of mathematics that uses letters or symbols to represent unknown numbers in equations. So what does that mean? Well, usually in math, you're used to solving a problem like this, where it asks you to do the math and find the answer. So it's basically asking us, 2 plus 3 equals what? We would just add 2 and 3, and we'd get that 2 plus 3 equals 5. But algebra is slightly different. In algebra, when we have an unknown number, instead of leaving that space blank or writing a question mark, we replace that unknown number with what we call a variable. In this case, we're using the letter x as our variable. And note, this is not a multiplication sign. And that's pretty much the difference between the math that we're used to and algebra. Instead of being told what math to do and to just find the answer, we write out a full equation, put variables in place of numbers we don't know yet, and then we solve for those variables, or figure out what numbers they are. Let's take a closer look at equations. Every equation has three things, a left side, a right side, and an equal sign in the middle. As a whole, an equation is basically a statement that says the left side and the right side are equal. Everything that's on the left side of the equal sign is equal to everything that's on the right side of the equal sign. So to sum it up, in algebra we have equations, and those equations consist of numbers and variables. And usually, our job is to figure out what numbers those variables represent so that the equation is true, so that the left side is equal to the right side. So why do we use algebra so much in physics? Well, because in physics, we're using equations all of the time. When you see one on your equation sheet, like this one, all of the things in the equation are variables. Usually, there aren't any numbers, because we can plug in any numbers we want, as long as the left side and the right side are equal. And as we work through a physics problem, usually we'll replace some of the variables with numbers that we know or that we're given. And usually, there will only be one variable left over, which we'll then have to solve for, and that'll be our answer. But before we can start solving equations, there's one thing we need to cover, which is the order of operations. You might not have called them operations before, but these are operations. Addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division, and each one has a symbol that we commonly use. Moving forward, though, we'll be using these symbols to represent each operation. For addition and subtraction, we'll still use the same plus sign and minus sign. But for multiplication, we have options. Sometimes you'll see the multiplication written as a dot, but more commonly, you'll see two numbers that are next to each other, and one or both of the numbers are inside parentheses, with no other symbol between them. This means that we have to multiply the two numbers. So here, we'd multiply 4 times 2. For division, we use the symbols for fractions. This might be written as a slant, or we might write the fraction with a number on top and a number on the bottom. So here we'd have 4 divided by 2. And just to reiterate, because this is used the most in physics, multiplication is implied if there's no operation symbol between two numbers or variables. So these are all examples of things that are being multiplied. We have 4 times 2, both in parentheses. 4 times 2, but only the 2 is in parentheses. Here we have 4 times the sum of 1 plus 2. With variables, we don't really use parentheses because we can't really get confused writing a letter next to a number, or two letters next to each other. So here we have 2 times x, x times y, and f equals m times a. Cool, so we know what the operations are and what they look like. But say we're given an equation like this, and we have to start doing the math. Where do we start? Do we just work left to right, or do we start with what looks easier? There's actually an agreed-upon set of rules for what order you're supposed to do the math, and that's what we call the order of operations. 
The reason this exists is so that anyone can look at the same math written down or typed into a computer, and they'll all get the same answer. So first, you would do the math that's inside a set of parentheses. Second, you calculate any numbers with exponents. Third and fourth, you do any multiplication or division. And then fifth and sixth, you do all the addition and subtraction. We have these little brackets here because you can actually do multiplication and division at the same time. And you can do addition and subtraction at the same time. But multiplication and division have to come before addition and subtraction. And to memorize this order of operations, we usually use the word PEMDAS, which is the first letter of each operation. There are different ways that we can remember the letters in PEMDAS, but the one I use and the one I hear the most is please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. So let's work through an example of how to use the order of operations. Here's that equation we saw before. So following the order of operations, first we do any math inside a set of parentheses. A key thing here is that the stuff inside parentheses also follows the order of operations itself. In our case, everything in parentheses is addition and subtraction, so we can do all of that in one step. 2 minus 1 becomes 1. 1 plus 3 becomes 4. 5 minus 2 becomes 3. And 8 minus 5 becomes 3. Next up is any number with an exponent. Here, now we have 3 squared, 3 with an exponent of 2. So we calculate 3 squared, which is 3 times 3, and we get 9. Next, we do multiplication. Remember that numbers in parentheses next to each other means multiplication. So here we have 1 times 4, which becomes 4. Next, we can do any division. Here we have 4 divided by 2, which becomes 2, and 9 divided by 3, which becomes 3. And now all we have left to do is addition and subtraction, which we can do together. So 2 plus 3 minus 1 becomes 4, and there we go. We took that big bunch of math up there and simplified it down to get 4. And anyone else who sees that same bunch of math and simplifies it down will get the exact same answer, as long as they use the order of operations. Alright, finally we're ready for solving equations. So in order to solve an equation, which just means figuring out what the variables are, it's easiest if we rearrange or simplify the equation, which just means moving stuff around so that the variable we're solving for is on one side all by itself. Then, the equation will pretty much just tell us the answer, like in the example we just did. So here's a new example. We have this equation, and we want to figure out what x is, what number x represents, so that this equation is true. Well, we could sit there and think about it in your head for a bit and sort of reason it out. 5 plus what gives me 12? Or what we could do is rearrange the equation so we don't have to do any thinking. In this case, we're going to subtract 5 from both sides of the equation. On the left side, the 5's cancel out, and we're just left with x. And on the right side, 12 minus 5 gives us 7. And there's our answer. Our variable x is all by itself on one side, and the other side is simplified to just one number. So, we know x equals 7, and we don't have to do any guessing and checking. And what we just did there was the big important thing about equations. You can do whatever you want to them, as long as you do the same thing to both sides of the equation. That way, the equation is still a correct statement, it's still true. Think of it like a balance. We have our left side and our right side, and as long as we do the same thing to both sides, our equation is still true. In that example, we subtracted 5 from both sides to get our answer. For this equation here, we can divide both sides of our equation by 2, and on the left, we get 2x divided by 2 is just x, and 8 divided by 2 is 4, and our answer is x equals 4. Another way to look at this is an equation that has no variables. So obviously 1 equals 1, and no matter what we do, as long as we do the same thing to both sides, our equation is still true. Now, let's try rearranging an equation that only has variables. Here we have the equation f equals ma, which stands for force equals mass times acceleration. 
but say we wanted to get the variable m all by itself on one side. Well, all we have to do is divide both sides by the variable a. And note that on the right, we have a divided by a, and any number divided by itself, or any variable divided by itself, is equal to 1. So on the right side, we just have m times 1, or m. And now we have f divided by a equals m. We have m all by itself, and this equation is still true. Say we want to solve for m, we want to find out what number m is. Given the equation f equals ma, and that f equals 10 and a equals 2. Well, we have two different paths that we can take. For path a, we would rearrange the equation first, and then we would plug in the numbers. So here we would start with our equation, f equals ma. Then we would divide both sides by a to get f divided by a equals m. And now, m is on one side all by itself. So we just plug in the numbers that were given, f equals 10 and a equals 2. We do the math, 10 divided by 2, and we find that m equals 5. Or for path b, we can plug in the numbers first, and then rearrange the equation. Here we have our equation, f equals ma. We plug in f equals 10 and a equals 2, and we're left with 10 equals m times 2. Next, we would divide both sides of the equation by 2, and we'd find that m equals 5. And both of these paths work. Sometimes different people will have different preferences of what they do first, and a lot of the time we end up going back and forth between rearranging the equation and plugging in numbers so that the equation is easier to work with. Alright, so let's do a quick recap. First, we learned about algebraic equations which have numbers and variables in them. And every equation has a left side, a right side, and an equal sign. And the equation is basically just saying that the left side and the right side are equal. We covered the symbols that we'll use to represent each of the different operations. And we learned that multiplication is implied if there's no operation symbol between two numbers or variables. Next, we covered the order of operations and a trick to remember them. And finally, we learned that the key to solving and rearranging equations is to keep the equation balanced by doing the same thing to both sides of the equation. Alright, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.